Part 3 of Illyrial, or A Voyage to Other Worlds, a tale by Vladislav Lakzima. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 17 Next morning I commenced my study of the Martian language. The picture writing was not difficult, for the symbols were the same in principle as ours founded indeed on the basis of geometry or natural symbolism such as must be almost universal the circle meant space the point meant unity the multiplication of points meant numbers the equal lines meant equality the crossed lines meant addition the picture of the thing meant the thing depicted it was the same symbolism as was the basis of human writing in the egyptian hieroglyphic or the ancient chinese a small part of which still lingers with you in mathematical and masonic symbols it was the language not of a particular world but of the universe still it had local symbols for ideas belonging to that martian world these i had to learn but my instructor soon put me in the way of them by explaining them through general symbols when i could read the martian writing i found there was another as on earth phonetic mode of writing short and simple as your shorthand which represented sounds and was in common use by this i was soon able to learn the spoken language and thereby to converse with my instructor by word of mouth the spoken language was very simple each syllable conveyed an idea the consonant sounds representing the idea in its special sense the vowel sound the part of speech or grammatical inflection thus all roots were consonants all inflections vowel sounds by this the idea was in the consonants and the part of speech the form of the idea was in the vowels thus supposing we were to adopt this system in england man would represent the thought m, m meaning humanity and a marking a noun man would be men men would be manly min to man or provide with men mon to be manly mun would be manliness and so the idea would be altered through some score of vowel sounds have you many languages in your world as we have on earth i asked my instructor we had them once but we agreed to abolish them and substitute one as near perfection as we could make it it is far better for a world to have only one language now one can travel from land to land without hindrance and converse with people of all nations it is many centuries since we had diversity of speech how did you arrange this we had some ages ago a great congress on this subject where all the assembly agreed to have one language an academy was formed to establish a perfect language after long discussion a scheme was adopted and submitted to the whole world again and accepted this was taught in all the schools and in time as the young grew old and died off the old languages died with them or rather were reserved for a study of a few of the learned since then we have had but one language it almost looks i said as if on earth as with you and us this may in time be the case for two quarters of the earth are accepting the use of one language the english perhaps it may in time be dominant but yours is a formed not a natural language partly so but only in part for we still retain the basis of the ancient tongues have you any exceptions in your language no none no none a rule once given is always preserved in the old languages corruptions and exceptions did exist in the new none as soon as we could thus converse together my instructor asked me many thousands of questions about my world and also when he learnt i had been on earth 
about yours he seemed to be of a most inquisitive mind and anxious to learn all i could teach him about our worlds it seemed that the first elements of astronomy were as well understood by him as by your best astronomers observations had been systematically carried on for ages and instruments had been perfected martians evidently wished as far as they could mentally to soar above the little world to which they had been bound and on which they lived they had measured the distances of their sister worlds from their own and from the mighty sun they had examined their elements in the spectroscope they had watched their movements i asked him once about the history of his world and what was its past there was a time he said when war raged in our world most terribly each of our four great continents were separate nations each struggled for supremacy each strove to attain sovereignty over all the rest a sovereignty bought at a terrible price all countries were desolated population was reduced to a hundredth many evil souls were sent forth from our world unfitted for a higher state then god looked on us with pity our world was losing her use in this vast creation as the fitting abode of spirits for a while incarnated to prepare for a higher life in happier spheres then in his love he sent the holy one to teach us better he taught us useful lessons that peace not war was the source of happiness that love not hate was the due of all but the holy one taught us also to hate sin and lying falsehood and gross low pleasure and our ancestors learnt the lesson we had been united by force into one state and now were taught to love one another peace was established but still our sensitive irritable natures were eager to hate something we were taught to hate sin and if needed to slay the sinner a great war arose then against sin and was waged against all who erred against our pristine nobleness and so the law was instituted that those who erred against truth or honour or in females against modesty should be cast out of our world but yet cast out lovingly in the hope that in another life they might do better and so the arts of peace prospered among us the energy wasted in war was given to science and to progress to seek to know more to draw forth nature's secrets to develop to ennoble our race to increase the sum of happiness and so we prospered cities were raised where only forests grew before the wild beasts were tamed and utilized knowledge was augmented and the forces of nature were subdued to our will population increased wonderfully there were millions where there had been hundreds still we sought to increase the means of subsistence and nature wonderfully answered our demands our world began to assume its true position in creation tell me i said what is your government how do you secure peace in the olden days of wars and mutual destruction as i said we had four great states four great nations for our four continents with minor states on the islands all these contended against each other but then when the holy one's teachings were established and peace and love accepted the first step was to give each of the four nations their rights the great principle of unselfishness was established and only those who excelled in wisdom and virtue were promoted to positions of trust and power i should like to see some more of your great cities may i not do so yes i think you may only disguise yourself it would not be well for you to own yourself to be of another world than ours it might put some of our weaker ones into temptation foolish curiosity could be excited you would find much trouble for yourself and for us so you must disguise yourself 
so he arranged a disguise for me as a child of the martians to cover my inferior size and stained me to a colour like theirs and otherwise disguised me so that i could hardly know myself so one day he took me out again into the forest and told me that we should go together to the city of the waters the capital of the great island on which he dwelt it was situated between the great delarue ocean and that wide lake you call the lochia sea the point whence earth's astronomers usually calculate the meridians of the ruddy world as we walked on we conversed on many subjects we are wont to travel much in this our land he said for our winters are very cold and in our early state ages and ages ago we martians used to have but one home and when the snow came and the cold we used to huddle up ourselves in our houses and cause artificial heat and so spend the wretched winter hence have arisen our fire customs now as science has progressed everyone except those who live near the equator has two homes one in the northern and the other in the southern hemisphere and also most have an electric ship and car so when the winter comes on the family enter their ship and float down to the port of the other home with all their goods and so it is with each commune the same friends gather together in the other hemisphere as here and all home comforts are the same with the same friends the same community in the southern as in the northern hemisphere there then we dwell again till autumn comes when we go back again all together to the old home to find spring once more we thus live now in constant spring and summer you are like the migratory birds it seems of earth which never stay for winter possibly in ages to come men may be like this when modes of transport improve the rich sometimes already are so cheating the winter in warm climes from what you said about earth said my conductor and the state of humanity there i should say it was a world as yet far less developed than ours perhaps younger in the scale of creation a younger child of the glorious sun and yet very like ours men appear as yet hindered by sin wars bad government intestine quarrels and class selfishness from reaching the state in which we are and yet in our history i can well trace a period many thousands of years ago when we martians were no further advanced in enlightenment or in the knowledge of what was best for ourselves than you say you found mankind upon the earth during your recent visit perhaps the time may come in thousands of years hence when the human race may attain something like the state of society in which we martians now live the two worlds are very alike in everything in the future perhaps men who live in cold countries will usually quit them for summer climes we had not walked many minutes in the forest before almost suddenly his words about winter appeared realized the sky was clouded over the white snow fell on the ruddy vegetation i cannot describe how lovely it appeared above the leaves were glittering white and ornamented with exquisite snow crystals but below their ruddy glow was manifest this snowfall is not unlike i said to him what i have often seen in winter time in northern europe really if it were not for the ruddy foliage this might almost be a scene upon the earth yes he replied i was prepared for that remark the two worlds are very much alike in almost everything in snowfall in summer sun and winter cold in distribution of land and water into continents and seas in islands and lakes we even think we sometimes can trace a resemblance in the northern part of one of the hemispheres of earth to our world you mean in north america in canada and the lake regions of the united states it is true the configuration of the country there is very like what we see in mars meanwhile the snow fell more and more heavily my guide led me to a shelter which had been formed by some rocks and here we waited for the snow-shower to pass 
we were talking of your continents and islands with which your world is mapped out tell me how can i see them and traverse your globe as i have done the earth you advise me to maintain my secret but i fear my disguise will not suffice me to do what i manage safely to do upon the earth our difference in size alone makes it impracticable i think we can do it but you must go with me listen to my proposal when we reach the ocean city if you desire it we may embark together on the little electric ship of our commune which i have at my disposal i can easily navigate her myself in every sea and port is it possible can one martian alone with a single companion navigate a vessel round the whole of his world no man has ever attempted such a feat yet it is almost impossible you forget said my companion the conditions of the voyage are quite different to those which men would have to encounter on earth our oceans are not so vast from shore to shore is not so far our electric ships are exquisitely constructed to give a complete power over the natural forces we have but to connect or to disjoin a wire to establish or destroy an immense force and electricity is as you know the key force the master force of our solar system by my command of this power in my little vessel i can go anywhere on the waters and do anything we reached a shed close to a railroad of polished steel from the shed he drew an electric car and mounting it bade me do so likewise he touched the electro motor and we dashed through the forest. End of chapter 17